Neuroimmunology develops new strategies against brain aging and degeneration. Michael Schwarz, the Weizmann Institute of Science. Soon after the fall of the wall, I was invited to visit the Charité University Hospital in East Berlin. I felt like I'd been brought back to the old time of classical European top universities, and it emphasized how culture can build or destroy science and education. My job today is to convince you that there is a silent barrier within our body, the barrier between the mind and the immune system. And this barrier exists for decades. And what I'm going to show you today, a journey that we have gone through over the last 15 years where we broke this barrier between the mind and the immune system. And it was, not very, diff it was very difficult to break. And when we first did it, I got a letter from someone who quoted Abraham Lincoln. And he said, if you are doing any revolution, don't try to convince your opponents. If you are right, you don't need it. If you are wrong, it will not help you. So that's what we did. We kept on. So what I'm going to, sh to convince you today, that maybe the barrier between the mind and the immune system, if we understand it correctly, it, make, it can make us smarter, healthier, and maybe delay onset of brain aging, age-related dementia, and neurodegenerative diseases. So I'll, a brief, brief introduction about our brain and the relationship with the blood. The brain is uh, about 2% of the weight of our body. However, it consumes more than 20% of the oxygen. It's the biggest consumer of the oxygen from the blood. Nevertheless, although the brain is enriched with blood vessels, there is no contact between the blood vessels and the brain tissue. Every blood vessel in the brain is embedded in a barrier, so there is no contact. Generally speaking, we all know that there is a blood-brain barrier. This was taken by scientists, clinicians, neurosurgeons for decades as if no immune cells are allowed to enter the, the brain under any circumstances. Over the last 20 years, there is a, a huge information that in all neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer, age-related dementia, Parkinson, depression, all, you name it, stroke, there is a local inflammation. Scientists taken it as if it implies that there are immune cells getting into the brain. And there were attempts over the last 20 years in all disciplines of neuro and neurosciences and neurology to treat Alzheimer's, Parkinson, ALS with anti-inflammatory drugs. All fall short. And the question is, why? Is it the complexity? Is it lack of understanding? We heard a few minutes ago that it's the complexity. I believe is it's not only the complexity, it's it may, mainly because dogma and it's very difficult to break dogma. So we decided a couple of years ago to be brave enough and to revisit the entire issue. We know that now in the 21st century that we can replace heart, we can replace kidney, we can replace almost all part of the body. For sure, we will never be able to replace brain, eye, or spinal cord. So we ask ourselves, how come that a tissue like the brain that is so indispensable have given up the opportunity to be assisted by the major uh, system of repair, the immune system? So we decided to revisit the entire issue, and now, 15 years later, we can tell you that the healthy uh, mind means healthy immune system. The mind depends on the immune system. And if in the past we used to say that who we are is a reflection of our genetic background, our uh, past experience, our environment, now I can tell you it's also how we, our, 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 our immune system is functioning. So in the last uh, uh, 11 minutes, I'll share with you how we got into it. So we started our, our studies uh, almost 20 years ago in a model of spinal cord injury. We know that we don't repair spinal cord. Following injury, we don't repair brain, and the dogma at that time was that it's because inflammation. 
So we decided to revisit, and here we broke the first dogma. We found that immune cells are needed for repair. We, uh, we found two types of immune cells, uh, uh, ones that are chewing and cleaning this, uh, any uh, healing, uh, any wound healing, and they are called macrophages. They are the garbage disposal of our body. And we found, in addition, that Lymphocytes that recognize brain antigen are also needed for repair. To all of us, we call them autoimmune cells. At that time, autoimmune cells were considered as forbidden. So we broke two, two dogma at the price of one. First, that we need immune cells, and not only immune cells, immune cells that recognize brain. Uh, as I said, we paid the penalty because at the beginning no one trusted us, but lucky enough we were very stubborn. And I remember that when Christopher Reeve came to visit the Weizmann Institute many years ago and uh, Larry King interviewed him and asked him, what do you think about the research in Israel? He said, they are brave enough. So we were brave enough to keep on, and uh, subsequently we found that these immune cells that recognize brain antigen are not only needed for repair, they are needed for our day-to-day -day life, for maintaining a, a production of new stem cells in the brain for cognition and fighting off uh, a stress. So now, then there came the next question. We know that the brain is protected by barriers, so how come these immune cells are getting into the brain? Do they have to break barrier? And if they have to break barrier, this, they are causing pathology in order to cure uh, the uh, spinal cord. And lately we found that it, this is not the truth. The brain is not only covered by blood-brain barrier. There is one unique barrier between the brain and the blood. And this is in the roof of our ventricle. This barrier is acting like epithelial tissue and it's filtered the blood and it's created the fluid in which our brain is floating. And it's called the blood cerebrospinal fluid barrier. What we discovered that this barrier is permissive for immune cells, but it's a very important barrier. It's a barrier that filters the immune cells and educates them to make sure that what go comes to the brain is helpful for repair. And interestingly, it's remote from the, the site of injury, so it's, it's from, uh, up in the brain, in the ventricles, so when there is any injury in the spinal cord and any part of the brain, it's uh, it conveys a signal to this barrier, we need you, open the barrier, and cells are getting there and facilitate repair. If you block them, they don't. Uh, and here you can see that if you put immune cells in this uh, fluid, uh, the immune cells facilitating repair, this is a spinal cord injury, this animal is not treated, and this animal are treated, and they are repairing very nicely. So subsequently, we ask ourselves the next question. What is the role of these immune cells that are sitting in this barrier? This is a filter at the roof of the brain in which the cells are sitting all their life. And this is the next barrier that we broke. So it was believed that there is uh, there are only barrier between the brain and the mind. And now we are saying that immune cells are sitting in this barrier. They have the key to open this barrier and to sense when they are needed and they are entering into the brain territory. So now we are finding a situation where in all our life, at the border of the brain, they are sitting these immune cells. What is the role of these immune cells? What we are finding, that they are part of the brain plasticity. As you heard this morning, in our hippo yeah, hippocampus, the part of the brain which is responsible for learning and memory, there are stem cells that are sitting all our life. They are, part, they are uh, contributing to cell renewal. So what we f are finding that if we place an animal in an enriched environment, like all of us are doing exercises, and we believe that exercises are good for us, and they are. They are contributing to formation of new neurons, unless we are too obsessive. So they are uh, contributing to formation of new neurons. If you take immune-compromised animal, animal that have completely healthy brain, but their immune system is sick, they will not enjoy the benefit of exercises. So exercises are good for those individuals that the immune system is good, they can benefit from the brain. If your, the immune system is compromised, it will not benefit the brain. This is just to show you how robust, this is our hippocampus, these are new neurons that are being formed as a result of exercises of normal animal, and this is normal animal, perfect brain, but a sick immune system. So basically we are suggesting that the immune system is boosting our brain cell renewal. In addition to it, we find that the same situation, healthy brain, 
sick immune system, there is reduction in cognitive ability. So an individual can be with excellent IQ, very high IQ, but cannot enjoy this IQ if the immune system is compromised. But it's reversible, which is the good news. So, um, and this led us to consider maybe that we can, aging of the brain is not a chronological aging, but aging of the immune system. And we do know that some people at the age of 90 have perfect memory, and some people at the age of 60 have impaired memory. So we are suggesting that the memory is a reflection of our immunological aging and not chronological aging. And this is an anecdote that I want to share with you. When we did this work, connecting the cognition to the immune system, one of my students was pregnant at that time. And she asked me, is it possible that I have impaired cognition during pregnancy and it's related to the immune system? I said, of course. Why? Because at least 50% of the fetus is coming from your husband. Or, or, or not your husband. <laughs> but <laughs> at least 50% comes from the other, the other part. So the immune system is suppressed in order to avoid rejection of the fetus. So we challenge it, and indeed we found in animal, during pregnancy, cognition is going down, formation of new neurons is going down, and it's back to normal after labor, so it's reversible. So the next part that we would like to show, share with you very quickly, that the immune system is also helping us to cope with stress. If you place animal in a stressful condition like predator, this in this case are mouse that are, are, are only smelling the odor of a cat, they are stagnated. If you put animals that are immune compromised, they develop post-traumatic stress disorder. If they are normal, they will not develop it. So the, the immune system helps us co to cope with stress. It doesn't change the perception of the stress, but it helps to recover from the stress. So where does it take us in terms of neurodegenerative diseases and aging? What we found that we can rejuvenate the immune system by and thereby rejuvenating the brain to, uh, to some extent. And in neurodegenerative diseases, as I told you when we started, that there were many clinical trials with the blessing of the FDA to use anti-inflammatory uh, uh, drug to cure Alzheimer, to cure ALS, and to cure many of these diseases. None of these treatments uh, were successful. And finally, what we are finding that you have to boost the immune system in order to recruit the immune cells in the brain to facilitate curing. And we have adopted this approach in, spine, in uh, Alzheimer. And now we are finding that Alzheimer animal, we know so far how to cure animals, not patient yet, but we are on the way. So we found that in Alzheimer, we, when we boost the level of immunity in the periphery, we restore cognitive ability. We are testing it in, um, by uh, navigate, testing na uh, memory of navigation. And we use a similar approach in, uh, in ALS, which is the fatal motor neuron disease, and we can extend life expectancy. So overall, what we are suggesting, that there is a barrier that was ignored for many years that is a filter for immune cells to come in. These immune cells are pivotal for maintenance and repair. The brain is signaling <coughs> to this barrier we need it, and immune cells are getting there. A young boy has healthy immune system, and LC filter and everything goes very well. In aging, we are losing the immune system. In some of diseases like depression, the immune cells are suppressing. So our journey took us many years ago. We started in this way, no immune cells in the brain, no autoimmune, and now we are back to normal. I'm almost finishing. <laughs> so I will skip the take-home message. And if you go back to the history of neuroscience, the godfather of modern no neuroscience, oh, I love flowers. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> modern neuroscience, he said, oh, here you see, that's for you. That neurons are mysterious butterfly of the soul. We believe that the immune system uh, is the nectar of this butterfly. We just need to know how to recruit it rather than suppress it. Thank you so much. <laughs>